Tech Cocktail Sessions, educational and inspirational talks from experienced startup founders, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders. Yeah, so I guess I wanted to talk about something that I'm really passionate about, and um, it, it's kind of the life philosophy that I live by, and that's my intense laziness. <laughs> um, if you kind of look at every major decision I've made in my life over this last several years, it's been really based off the fact that I like doing what's easy. And it's amazing what happens when you kind of surrender yourself to, whoa. Um, yeah, is that better? OK. So it's kind of amazing what happens when you surrender yourself to the easy things to do in life. Um, and, and this is actually a really strong philosophy that I've thought through over many years. Um, and it's really similar to um, uh, a, another venture capitalist, a guy named Randy Commissar, and his philosophy on always trying to work with companies that have unfair advantages to win. Um, and it's, you know, like I said, it's a guiding principle for me, and I really see it play out in the research that I've done and the companies that I've invested in. Um, it's always really, really easy to look at the world and then do stuff that is to your best advantage. Um, you know, and you know, I definitely practice what I preach. So I remember with my wife, I actually proposed to marry her on the fourth date. And the reason why I did that was because it was one of those things where everything was perfectly aligned. We were getting together, we were getting along perfectly. We were at the right stage of our life and everything just lined up well. And so I said, okay, let's do it. And so we did it and it's been awesome. And we've been married for seven years now and haven't killed each other yet. So it's awesome. Um, likewise, you know, with companies, it's if I see a company that has a really strong unfair advantage to succeed in the space that they're trying to succeed at, you know, you can do due diligence on that deal forever, but if it's got unfair advantages to win, then you back it. And so, you know, our, our most recent company that we backed is a company called Coupon Media, and we put down our term sheet in front of that company in 48 hours. And of those 48 hours, I want to say 40 of the hours was just getting the green light from the lawyer to approve the term sheet. Um, and I think that we probably actually made the decision to fund the company in the first 30, 40 minutes of listening to TJ pitch us. Um, and, you know, I guess I'll spend the bulk of my time kind of going over the research that I focused on around startup accelerators because it's, that, it's the same story over and over again. These things work when they have unfair advantages to succeed. When everything is breaking their way and they set themselves up for everything to break the way, they do their best. So, you know, I work at a venture capital fund that likes to invest in companies in non-traditional markets. We invest in places in the middle of the US, cities like Austin, Boulder, Chicago, places like that. Stuff, places that you wouldn't traditionally think about venture investments happening in. Or at least, you know, if you look at the NVCA numbers, cities where, you know, less than 10% of the dollars flow. Um, and when you look at those cities, you, you, the initial inclination is to say, oh, Companies can't be successful there, but the reality is that the American economy is structured in a certain way so that certain cities are the best in the world at certain things. And if you have companies in those cities that take advantage of those industries that are in those cities, then they have unfair advantages to succeed. Um, you know, so, so you know, if you're in Cincinnati, Ohio, you know, the home of the largest CPG company on the planet, Startups that take advantage of that tend to work out well. You know, companies that try to work in a different industry don't. And so, you know, with that background, our fund became super interested in the activity of startup accelerators. And the reason why was because we saw them as an opportunity to help startups kind of build up their communities around the unfair advantages that their cities lie in. And so as an investor in several of these, we had access to a lot of data. Um, and so we started crunching the numbers on these. And then, so starting in 2010, we actually started releasing a report in which we said, which startup accelerators tend to do the best. And the results were exactly as you'd expect. The startup accelerators that have the closest ties 
to managing directors who have been successful entrepreneurs in their own right tend to do the best. The startup accelerators that are tied to you know, sources of capital from day one tend to do the best. The startup accelerators that are tied to the industries that their cities are tied to tend to do the best. Or as I would like to call it, the lazy approach. <laughs> if you've got a company, I mean, if you have a startup and you're learning from someone who's successfully raised a ton of money, had a very successful business model and exited before as your lead mentor, and you join an accelerator that already has a ton of sources of capital tied to it, and you're trying to sell to customers that are local to you, that's really easy. <laughs> or I guess, I mean, all startups are hard, but that's a lot easier than trying to atta attack a problem without those things to your advantage. And so, you know, once again, I look at that and I just see an affirmation of my lifelong philosophy of you just do what you're good at and you stick to your own knitting that way. And so, you know, I guess that's confirmation bias, but that's what I care a ton about.